Loser goes home. Moses and say the kiss. Let's get this one going. Thank you, Paula. Great death segment as always. Let's get into this one. Forza and bad news, Eagles. Rip or Rio. You're either winning or you're going home. Yeah, and we get another one right out of the gate. Fast pace. Kenzie's already out long at the blue box, dueling a little bit. Utility to keep the defense at bay. It's towards mid. We head, but GXX has the first opening kill. Now out middle. All the action from Forza is coming in. Regan does what he can, and the pressure is not subsiding. Look for the. Positioning of GXX, he gets boosted. You'll see them getting through the back side of the window. He shoots them in the heel a few times, but not a ton of damage. It does give Sonari a chance to reposition, but Norway's gonna put him down. And that means the site is now in possession of Forza. However, still down a man on this. They'll get the bomb in position, but not much before they arrive. And they'll sacrifice GXX. He's on three HP, it was a headshot anyway. But they didn't get through the door with it. They didn't actually run and barge in. So they got Shelfie down. They know where Norway is. Now they'll run him in. And it's Synopsy, who's been pretty impressive throughout the course of this road to Rio who's going to close the rounds. That's a pretty disgusting just stop at the door, and you can see it made him second guess back towards window as well. A really nicely done retake, just sending in the low HP player for the sacrifice to know the position. It actually also even sprung the track. The window player, the trap, excuse me, the window player kind of swung a little bit too early right there. Shalfi and Norway just had nothing to do at the end of the day, so pissed around to the Bad News Eagles on defense, and that's got him started out well. See if they can capitalize on it then, because we know how impressive or annoying, whatever you want to call it, the second round buys are, and that's largely due to the scouts. Already didn't spot anyone going over that time because he played an off angle on the drop. So nor are we tagged by flames. They'll hear that, and they don't know what's inside of the B site. Forza didn't really invest a whole lot in the second round buy, so it's a little bit weaker here, which is going to allow a little bit more powerful buy moving forward, right? Like they're, they're kind of relying on getting some one deeks. They have no armor. They're just saying, if we're either going to pick someone off with a scout or we're going to get a, one of those crazy headshots of the Deagle, and that would be the opening we can try and take them advantage of. But they're not in the mood to kind of blow up and tank any, any real damage. Yeah, absolutely right that the armor and I think that's by virtue of the bomb going down in the first rounds. Yeah. Why risk not getting a plant this time and having little or money when you can get a gun round on round number three? Now it's it's imperative to say as well, BNE with this kind of investment into the into the rifles instead of SMGs, they very much know what's coming into the next round. So for them it's like we're not spending money on utility. We just want to make sure we have the rifles to challenge the AK forty sevens moving forward. So it's really, really important that maybe that's the only kill they take or the only death they take. Shots tapping toward the top. Jerry, nor are we very low. There's one of the one digs you talked about. It's still a three on three. Oh, he so got past. He got past the information. He did. Interestingly enough, Shelfie is going to be inside of the site. Now, this, the, the interesting thing with this as well is, as you say, they're not looking for much other than these one digs, but they are still making this a very expensive round for B&E, considering what they're up against. And they're going to get another. Oh, no way. The lack of armor cost him there. Six HP for GXX. He couldn't hit the shot, and now they know Shelfie's there. He still has another shot, potentially. I thought he hit that last one. I thought he actually got it down to a two-on-one, excuse me, but it is going to be three surviving. Could have been a lot worse with that kill in middle going the other direction, but Bad News Eagles now with two rounds. Yeah, that could have that could have changed the nature of the game. That would have been absolutely disgusting. Oh, man. Look at his HP as well. Oh, Ugh. the Deagle just screwed you. Two to nothing. But this is what four is saved for. They've got an AWP in the hands of Zor Zordi. Four AK-47s, plenty of utility, plenty of nades to work with. So a very strong buy coming in in this third round. I assume it's Zorte. Zorte? I would assume. Like we're going to give a little, a little flare at the end of it? Be, yeah, I don't know. Someone can tell us we're wrong. I mean, they'll tell us they're wrong, we're wrong either way, but feel free to tweet us if you know better. I think I think it's Zorte. In theory, be Zort, which sounds like the god of a cult leader. It does, except that you have... Ah, uh, I... Yeah, it could. I think it's already. I'm going to go with Sorty. Okay. I think that's what I've always done in the past, and no one said anything, Jason. So Perfect. Maybe no one will say anything this time. I'm not sure. Run boost for Jerry. Jerry's an easy one to say, but not an easy one to play against. He's been pretty solid lately as well. Obviously, building up quite a wealth of experience at this point in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Yeah. Well, the A bomb site is, I'm not going to say free, because Juan Flatro is starting to move up the ramp, but it does not have any kind of meaningful defense there. They are pulling a fourth player over towards the A side of the map. Regan is kind of second guessing his decision, hovering between rotating back between the bomb sites, huddled and CT spawn for the moment. Two players defending out towards long as well, and fours use some utility, and then they call for silence on the map. There's a lot of nades left in this defensive side. Regan gonna take down Kensi. Smoke goes into spawn. It's a bit late, obviously, because Regan was able to walk right through without him having a weapon in his hand. GXX sees the shadow. He's already got position. Low HP, easy to capitalize. So the man advantage remains with B and E. 
Oh, they have no idea Jerry's this close. This is a disgustingly quiet creep. It depends on how he finds this. Sees the flash. Ooh, he realized it late. Sees the second one as well. Credit to him for being able to dodge away. And you're absolutely right. Well, Flacho thought he was flashing toward the catwalk. He had no idea. Anyone was that close? Were gone? He didn't either. He didn't know that Jerry could peek over. He was still looking for a headshot back toward catwalk instead. And it's Synopsy. 5 HP, but at least get Shelfie back. GXX can capitalize on that. It's all down to Zordi suddenly. He swings. Two to five. Low HP on the first. Smartly gets a reposition, but a nice jump up GXX to change the angle. Yeah, that's actually a disgusting clutch from GXX. What good mobility. Three kills in the round. And they survive a really scary one because Jerry delivered some super sneaky kills. That, that I feel like that round is won usually by fours after Jerry does that kind of a performance. I feel like that round is won more often than it's not. What a way to take it away. Good round from GXX and 3 nothing start for Bad News Eagles. We're going to get a tech pause as well before we get started in round four. Yeah, just changing the angle and being less predictable on that because you could see he was already ready for him to peek up the ramp. Yep, that was that was sick. Uh, this is a good time while they fix the issue to uh, to just remind you guys this is both an elimination. Oh, and... I think they're uh, they're gonna take the armrests off is what they're trying to do. That's a classic. A lot of players are very particular about that one. Yeah, it's, the space. Well, the problem it's not only the, it's partly space so your elbow doesn't. They're gonna switch chairs. I think. That's, uh, what a great solution. Oh, you don't like your armrest? Oh, no, you they take have, mine. They have armrests too. Oh, yeah, but well, it, it might just be them... the height. It's yeah. not going down all the way. Gotcha. Maybe it's, it's uh, yeah. Look how much lower that is now. He was trying to slam it down. We saw that. See. Okay. Rigon's like, I don't like this one. What a great solution. What a comp, what a teammate. You know, here, you want me to drop you the op? How about I drop you a On the chair? other hand, he probably got his chair perfectly exactly the way he wants it, you know? Yeah, but it's, he may not be someone that cares about that. Okay. Well, I actually, um, Just saying that. I have the armrests. We have the armrests here. The reason I don't like armrests and with the way that they're running in ears with shorter cables, it's not as much of a deal, but the headset cables and stuff like it's wrapped around Just those saying, things. Dude, when you're qualifying for a major, you know, make sure it's all perfect. Oh, I get it. Don't no, cut I'm the corners. It. Don't skip. I don't even Just like what he things. just did with his, uh, um, the over ear headset, the white noise cable. He put it over his arm. Ugh, I'd hate the feel of that. <laughs> He'll probably move it. No worries. But no, I, I, um, I do, I totally understand why people take the armrests off. Keep your elbows free and clear, but also uh, I think the cables wrap around them too easily, and I, that's always been a pet peeve of mine with gaming chairs. Because then you stand up, you want to go to the kitchen, get a drink, whatever, and your headset goes flying, and suddenly you just broke your two. I have a solution for you. What's that? Wireless headset. Oh, cool. Yeah, I have one. I'm joining the future. No, I have one. I do. Um, and I do use it on my main PC, but I don't like the sound quality from it. That's for Christmas. Okay. It's probably just the one I have. Yeah, get a better one. Okay. You can buy me one for Christmas. Deal. Someone with a wireless headset company, send me one. Jerry, Kenzie, and Zorti up catwalk. And a big mid-centric defense from Bad News Eagles to start this out. GXX is looking like he wants to challenge a little bit deep on catwalk with the AWP. Good opening kill, headshot is there. They can't get the punish that they wanted. Zorti does find it, but Jerry goes down. That's the cost, another great deagle shot. And all of a sudden, we're on a three on three. I was going to say earlier, this is both a qualification and an elimination game for both of these teams. The winner moves on to the Rio Major, qualifies moving forward, and the loser gets sent packing. Yep, Rio or Rip. That's how it is. Sonari is going to take out Zorwi, or Norwi, excuse Norway. me. We got all the names mixed up now, but Norwi going to go out of that one. Sonari now turns his attention back toward the site, knowing that that's been compromised from Catwalk, and Zorwi tries to get a shot toward him with the Deagle. Bit of a pre-fire with it, looking for a bit of chance with... Crosshair placement being somewhat accurate. A guesstimation, but he spotted him toward the corner this time. That's accurate. He can see it clean and clear. Choppy knows they're working up. Good at anticipation of the read on that. Couldn't get the first shot, one tap toward ramp, but wants them to think that that's where he turns his attention. Tries to cut off the catwalk player, but unfortunately couldn't land either kill. Dangerous, dangerous round. Fours really putting the fear in Bad News Eagles. Despite the fact that it's zero to four, they've, they've had a pretty deadly dangerous half. And I'll tell you what as well, this isn't the worst thing in the world considering how good of a job Fours has done at keeping the economy low. Two players survived this round, one player survives the previous round. If Fours can just win one of these rounds, the economy's gone. And that'd be a huge reset to get pretty early on. So at least they're not letting the defense build things up and uh, a little bit unfortunate there. Four to nothing. And we're going to get a timeout. Not tactical, but tactical. This one from Fours to talk things over. Yeah, and uh, rightfully so. At a four nothing scoreline, like we say, this series extremely important for both of these teams. We already saw the heartbreak for Heat 
What a series that was. Not the cleanest, but man, it was exciting. Two young French teams as well. We haven't seen that in a while, getting some new talent. You've got Body on one side with his crew, and obviously Jax assisting on that. And then you've got MBK in-game leading with a new team, and one of them had to suffer, unfortunately. Majors have always been massively important in the Counter-Strike calendar and massively important for the players, and, and always a source of pride and, and all that. But I, I've seen more tears at this major, this qualifying cycle, than I've ever seen at any other major. Yeah, two reasons. Uh, I think we're getting a lot more younger teams now as well, uh, and, and people are getting more accustomed to getting on land. And two is that Rio with the fanfare. Yes. I think no one's gonna wanna miss out on being in front of 100,000 yeah, No one wants people. to watch that one from home. They wanna yep. be playing in the crowd. Absolutely, absolutely the case. But you're right, there's been a lot of investment in this one, and partly due to the fact that a lot of teams are shuffling things up and feeling like they're it's their time to shine. Uh, Synopsis is gonna shine this one with the opening kill toward B. Uh, but yet, they aren't achieving that, and that's stressful, and that's frustrating. Sure. Well, this would be a really, really tough round out of a timeout from fours to, uh, to take your foot off the pedal. I wonder if they're just gonna save. I think that's exactly what's happening. This is a save call from fours with about a minute left on the clock. I was gonna say, this is a really bad round to just fall flat and not get any damage done, even if you don't win the round, to not find kills, to let all five people survive for Bad News Eagles, because their money was gonna grow after it. But fours is just saying, you know what? We aren't winning this round. And they've got a $3,400 full losing bonus. And with the $1,000 built up on Jerry and Norway, another buy will come out in the next round. So fours is just gonna play again. So Bad News Eagles continuing to look pretty sharp at the start of this one. Uh, Dust 2 is Forza's pick as well. So you can understand the frustration and why they wanted to call that timeout already. Talk things over. Ancient is next. Ancient. Ancient. I say ancient and everyone calls me out. I like, I just, I don't know. It is a bit weird. Ancient. It is a bit weird, but we all have those words we say a little funny. Yeah. I have many of those. Well, and then Mirage if needed. I'm Canadian. I say scoot and oot weird. I was gonna say, it's just, I think that's a thing of that's a Canadian thing. Saying it's a charm, It's all funny. Five zero. AK's picked back up on the two previously dead fours players, and we go live into round number six. Touch on it from the ooh, hold the phone. Pop flash. Nice. Good peek. Great setup for Bad News Eagles. They're coming in with a game plan. They're looking good. Juan Flacho's even gonna be able to get away. GXX chimes in, and there's a nade. There's an airstrike. And you finally called one correct, and that's the most hype thing of all. I know, I was stoked on that. I absolutely got it. And it's they, taken six weeks. It has. Ladies and gentlemen, please clip it and ship it. Uh, this round might be clipped and shipped as well. Four saving in the last one. Get wrecked with that setup of the flash going through middle. Regon as well looking sharp and then the double peak from Catwalk. That is the backup contingency plan as they fought to try and redeem themselves. It's not gonna work. Shelfie, AK in hand, can see a WP even more expensive. They still have the bomb in possession, but I, I, where do you go? You, I, you really, at this point, you've gotta send Shelfie to open something up, so he's yeah. gonna try. Yeah, he's gonna do his best. The old college try. No one's peeking, though, from Bad News Eagles. Yeah, this is actually kind of crazy. No one's watched me. There's no utility. He hasn't made a noise. A reverse angle, though. That is actually pretty legit. You can stand toward the tunnels now. You have the site covered off. He's managed to hit that first shot. He's going to smoke CT now, but he's aware and can hear it. But the peak and the pre-fire scenario is able to put him down. And now this, sh whoa, I was going to say, should be a save. But Kenzie seems to think he's got a chance to get into this, given that his teammate gave him an opportunity with the one kill. Yeah, he's going to change ah, his there mind. it is. Yep. yep. So the op is gonna, he'll be able to, I mean, he can drop a Deagle if he really wants to, but Zorti will be able to buy an AK-47. Jerry, Shelfie, Norway can drop down to Galil's or their own pistols if they want to save up for one more round. But either way, I got to say, I love, I love what Bad News Eagles is showing early on in this Dust 2. That round right there is like a perfect encapsulation of like the philosophy of like, we're going to play to try and win this game, not just like we're going to come in and, and play to not lose. If that makes sense to you viewers out there. But they are really... Really going at it. Really coming right at fours, denying everything. So six to nothing now. And B&E has been an interesting, I don't know. I wouldn't say a dark horse, but sort of like a conundrum in this this group stage. And some of the teams they've played very closely and, and pushed. And I've been quietly impressed 
Especially, I think Synopsy really jumps off the page for me, the way he's played throughout this He had this a good event. ending to their series yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He, he had a he pretty was, important play. Yeah, he did. Unfortunately, it was a bit late for them. But uh, yeah, I mean, they, they lost that to Spirit yeah. 0-2. Um, but, and that was obviously Spirit qualified in the back of that. But yeah, obviously beat Astralis 16-3, uh, uh, crushed them. And then NIP, okay, that one didn't go so well. But Eternal Fire 16-14 to start it off. That was a close game, so it's they've they've been decent throughout. I think this. it's just really cool to see this team, who is like the Cinderella run to a certain extent of the last major, that come out of nowhere to make it into, you know, make it into the top eight, and then actually have them competing for the next major as well. I think it'd be a really cool story to have them back in and see what they can do. But same because sometimes course. sometimes those teams peak, right? And yep. they catch people on bad days, and they get one run, and then they're done. That's it. Or someone like poaches players from them, and that's you know they're gone. Doesn't whatever, seem like that's happening at all with this team. No, it's good. It's, it's really nice cool. to see. Yeah, because a lot of the underdogs suddenly the roster's different. Well, six to nothing. You have an AWP. You've got three deagles and a Tech Nine to make this work. A little bit of utility. Double smoke probably on the railing to help make the crossover. Interestingly enough, both of these teams beat Astralis to put us here. Four is 2 0 to Astralis to knock them out. And the game before that was the 16 3 win by Bad News Eagles. Big Miss GXX makes up for it. Some other pistol couldn't put him down. Kenzie will get one, but it's going to be all B and E afterwards. And Zordi's got to be careful holding that AWP. He's standing tall, but he's going to go down and be left without the weapon for the next round. 7 0 B and E. Yep. That was a little sloppy. Wasn't the cleanest thing in the world, but they got it done at the end of the day. And now they've got a double up setup. I don't know if they went into that by accident. But they've got it. Regan's going to take that one. I think it actually was a little bit by accident. Either way, a good long spawn is going to prompt him with the AWP to move forward and go for a quick shot at the long corner. So we'll keep our eyes on that one. Good hold from Juan Flatro. Boom. That's what they needed. Yep, that's exactly what they needed. Get this one started in Synopsy. They'll take down. They know that's going to be a B player, so there'll be some rotation and force out of this. Can see good positioning there for making sure that no one's going to push out Cat to try and compensate. Shelfie's going to go right into this. Up on the edge of the box already. Had the lineup, but a little bit slow. Let GXX on the AWP snap back at him. Now, Regan's got the secondary AWP. If they don't expect it, they might wander right into this. A little bit of utility being put out there. The smokes that thought were going to come in the last round. Counter Molotov is going to be late. Counter Nade is going to go a little bit too deep, but the shot is going to be perfect. Let's see. Looking for that. One way that we're seeing more and more on the box. It's not a huge, it's see-through from the other side. It just gives a bit more coverage. It gives you a bit more of a headshot to work with. Gray screen. Kenzie's gonna get Regon as well. Not a headshot, but still effective. And this is their best chance yet, all off the back of that early pick. Bomb's gonna go down. Is planted for long, but on the corner, less so than the pit, because it's inside the boxes. Zordi's the one with the AWP. He's not there. And as a result of this, actually, they are gonna bring the AK forward. Norway working up the wall. Careful for the person that's Goose, who's now trapped in with an AWP. It's Zordi that's going to be in trouble. There's no nades to go his direction, thankfully, because he has 16. Good headshot, but I don't know if they'll be ready for one Flatcher to drop down. Okay, it was called. And he reads it. Very well done from Norway, knowing he had to get closer to this bomb. And GXX waiting. We'll get one back and a slight chance. A very, very slim chance he gets this. He needs the kill right now, and the peak does come through. But it's 7-1. to one. That round is all Norway, because you could see the AWP on the side of fours was just was was just stuck in goose. He missed the initial shot, was brought down so low, and he knew from that point on that GXX was going to have him boxed in. Zorti just couldn't move, couldn't go for any kind of a repeat, couldn't go for any kind of support whatsoever. He's just frozen in time, saying, Norway, I got nothing to help you. And boy, did he step up. Good triple kill to get the first round on the board for fours. Now they need to hunt down that reset. Now they need to hunt down all the money that B&E has in the bank. Chelsea with a quick shoulder check inside sight. Trying to get Zordi into position, give him some information so we can slide out with the AWP, maybe off of one of those baited shots, but nothing comes of that so far. You've got Synopsy in there with a rifle and that's all. But they're gonna go quick on this. No one facing, no one challenging, so they know, oh, oh he was slow to get the nade. The smoke out, and he'll get taken down as a result. Meanwhile, though, on Flat True does pick up a single kill, and he will be in the tunnels behind them already as a result. So they need to be quick on this. They need to get the bomb down. Zordi knows. On Flat True doesn't want to overcommit to this until his teammates are ready. They're gonna start throwing utility in now. Extinguished Molotov immediately, though, because smoke on the site and Shelfie. He can control the situation and watch toward the doors, but man, he's gotta be careful for his right side spotted. And they're gonna put a 2-2 split on this retake. 
They've rotated GXX over one. Flat two starts it. Hetsy peeks the door. Good start. But Reed now they can because they know he's going to be there. He doubles up and it's double toward the tunnels. And they're ready for it. Sliding in behind the car. Tough positions. Or he's missed another shot though. And Kenzie has to be perfect. So far he is. And he'll spray down to seven. To two. And four. Their second round in a row. Oh man, they couldn't get by around their own smoke. That uh, their smoke actually helps them win that. Kenzie, what a great double for him. But the real victory comes towards the, the retake outside of the beat bomb site. Maybe goes a little bit early before the tunnel players are ready to really activate. Kenzie has a great round, an absolutely magnificent round. Five round lead. First time out called by Bad News Eagle. Oh, excuse me, this is from Fours. That, that actually kind of catches me off guard. That surprises me because Bad News Eagles don't really have a lot of money to play with. I thought they might have called it to talk things out, but it's Fours who say, let's go on a bit of a streak. I think it's the same situation though, because you can already see they've got a Galil on Norway. It went down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And the round before that was also a one-on-one. -on -one. True. So they haven't built up a ton of cash. And they know now they're probably going to be okay. It's actually well, a better buy than even I thought it was going to be. I, I think Bad News Eagles is, is very happy about that. That's a that's a timeout I think they might have called themselves to have a discussion here in this moment. So they're like, thanks, we'll take that. Two I, think, I think this is an economy timeout because they're trying to read what B&E is going to bring sure. against them. Totally. Two M4s and AWP on GXX and uh, upgraded pistols on Regon and Sinari. Oh, and they just missed the jump down. Oh, baby. Good win. That's the op gone. That's a already. second pick on the mid cross. Yep. And, and they won the first round off the back of one of those. So let's see if they can do the same here. Off was dropped, but obviously they'll pick that back up. Regan goes over to grab it off the corpse. I haven't seen a. Okay, you gotta crouch a little bit. It's easier to just crouch instead of using the second box. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen a cat boost in ages. They're all over the place, baby. We saw that, was, um, that was my always go-to. Like, you know, boost me on spawn. Made me sound like I knew what I was doing as we left spawn, and then I just go die. True. Well, Regan doesn't know what's about to happen to him because they're underneath the smoke. He just kind of catches wind of it at the end. Flat. The flick is fast, but it's not accurate. And ooh, out in the open, risky. And BNE is under a lot of pressure, and they're in a lot of trouble. And that off is looking nervous. Nervous, but now it's finding kills. They count as quick scopes, but might as well have been in between. Zordy's gonna get him with a nade though, and that'll end the rounds. And man oh man, that is some hair for the ages. It is beautiful. Keeps it out of the eyes. Well, three straight for fours. That's the knockout punch they finally needed. Boom. They can close this gap now massively. One round where BNE has to sit back on just pistols, and we'll see when they get back into things. Can they actually take the momentum away from fours? That's gonna be the next challenge for them. They did a great job of getting started on the right foot and just carrying it with them to seven, but can they actually put a stop to fours? Not really any damage on that to Jerry, actually. I said, ooh, because I heard the damage coming through, and we already saw death by a thousand paper cuts onto Shelby, so I thought there was gonna be more done there, but only scratched him to two HP a loss as we're gone, forced off of Position at mid does put a deagle shot into Norway, and we got smoke set already. So this will be a B hit, and they're gonna go straight with it. They don't want to deal with crossfires, man. Oh Ooh. man, Zordy saves Kenzie, but that was a bit sloppy, a bit optimistic. Standing on the entrance of the site, and just pulling out a nade. Holy moly! And it's gonna cost them because one flat through. Oh man, he's dinked them up. Look at the HP. That was a shot and a half. Zordy had to be perfect to close that out. Oh my lord, if, they, if that had ever just slowed down once, Bad News Eagles might have been able to make it work. Great shooting with the P250, but that the problem is the AK-47 they salvaged at long was never able to get activated. It was never able to get involved in the fight until the very end, and it's such a disadvantage. You also gotta give, got give a shout out to Fours as well. They get stalled out in middle with good damage and too much pressure, more pressure than they would have liked. They make a very quick adjustment to just hit the B tunnels. They did not slow down or wait whatsoever. Very, very decisive. It's an opsy. Box position. They didn't see him throw it. They check it. Doesn't matter. He's got the shot and doubles it to take down Jerry. GXX lineup, they're gonna back off this. They don't have the mid to take anymore. There's no need to rushing into a slaughter, so they'll change the approach, and that's why Norway goes out long. Yeah, but look how many players rotated. All five players are in spawn or towards the B bomb site. 
They're out of position, although there's no real way for Force to capitalize on it quite yet, and there's obviously no way for them to know. That's Well, that's what I was going to go to next, is that, yeah, they've got Norway long. They know that corridor is open, but that's probably because they don't want to give away a pick. He doesn't have any indication as to what's going on in Catwalk. So mid control is going to be the next play for BNE. You'd imagine they, ooh, maybe not with that kill, but I think they're going to have to push regardless because they're out of position towards A. I called out Zordi for missing a few shots early on. He's up to 13 now, quietly, and the last two rounds have been pretty loud. He's got two more here as they try and get through the doors. That brings it to a three on three. And now Norway knows he has more position than he thought because with that many people inside mid, he's gonna take long, he's gonna get a shot and a spray control. Shelby's gonna get the last bullet for him. They've just pulled this back and it's all GXX that remains. That's a huge, huge mistake. That's a huge give up for BNE. They let Zorti have whatever he wanted in the lower tunnels. Two 1v1 fights, no chance of a trade. Bad News Eagles never pounce on that kind of a play. And it was really the only play they had left at that point is when you're rotating to stop a B push and they stall it out. You got to do something. When all four players are there, go for that mid control. Whew, that one's tough. That is brutal. This was a three on five. Synopsy had that yeah. great start. The double kill outside of the B bomb site, the clever smoke behind you to mask your position and still let it slip away. Yeah, absolutely they did. Norway walks along, no one's there, and then you're right, they still have that information, but they nail it. So seven, nothing to five runs in a row now, rounds in a row for Forza. So this is a huge turnaround of the game. And again, this is Forza's map choice, so they'll be very happy that they got back into it when they did, because any more than that, the panic might start to set in. Again, winner of this goes through to Rio. The loser is done. This is a 2-2 matchup, as are all of our matches tomorrow at this point. Big, big games ahead. Some of these guys, this is the biggest games they'll ever play in their lives. To date, at least. To date. We obviously hope for their sake that they'll continue going upward. Ooh. Okay, fours, it took a little bit of time for them to wake up into this, but it feels like they're here. It feels like they've arrived. Five in a row to come back from a seven round deficit. And Bad News Eagles haven't shown they can stop it just yet. GXX might try and peek before that smoke fully plumes or maybe around the edge. It's got the first. Surely gets spammed down by Kenzie. Yeah, desperate. He knew the situation. As soon as he shot one, he realized, oh, they are close in that smoke. And Kenzie's going to double the 401. Flatro finds him with the MP9. But it's all under Synopsy's same weapon. And a lot more distance between him and the target. So Kenzie's able to show that one down as well. And it's now one round the difference. Yeah, this is, this is a fantastic comeback. Two rounds left in the first half. It has been a, a very heavy contrast. Just a seven round streak, now a six round streak for fours. We'll see if Bad News Eagles, they haven't, one thing also, Bad News Eagles, remember when they opened up this game on that on that seven round run, they were being aggressive. They were pop flashing over mid, peeking and challenging, deep nades towards the telephone pole, deep, deep nades yeah, towards right. top of catwalk. They've been really tempered. They've been put back in their place. Child finally got a slap on the wrist. Shelfie underneath in the tunnels. Jerry's gonna walk out first. We're going easy shot. No trade, but there it is. Damage is still there though. Nine left over on the life of Shelfie. He might just turn into a lurk in these tunnels. Just park himself here for the, for the next 30 seconds or so. Make sure nobody's gonna push. Give his team time and information to take control of Catwalk. GXX, flash, falls off the angle. That's pretty standard. Zordon wants to get back into this. Remember the five on three? He was the one that did it, but he couldn't spot one flat through that time. And he'll spray in. Shalf is still on a very, very low amount of health. He's on nine, remember, from that first exchange. So he can't really afford to swing and spray. And the AWP picked up by him, probably the right call given his situation. <laughs> Good drop down Norway, back to a three on three, and he has control of CT spawn. Nearly a peak that came out from GXX, but he tucked himself in the corner before that shot could be led. Molotov down, but now it's B instead. They're putting pressure on him, fair enough. Doesn't have smokes to cover his position. They've got to get him from somewhere, and Synopsy's the one to do it. That's a huge peak from the B halls because the defense was split. This is all on one player. It's all on Kenzie. If he gets this kill, then Shelfie might be able to be I don't Effective. think, I don't know if Shelfie can. There's no smoke towards CT. Remember, he's on nine. So he's just walked. They haven't peeked there him. Kenzie's got it. They didn't peek him. You're absolutely right. They have no idea. The smoke was there late. They didn't see him cross, and he gets one more. So considering the HP, job done. Scenario versus Kenzie in a one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of time for it, though, too. And Scenario's looking for any nade, any kit he and can possibly kits. pick up. Yeah. He doesn't have one, and there's none, as far as I can tell, inside of the site either. So this is going to be a desperate position for him to try and pull back. He's got to go quick. 
Fortunately for his sake, he has the HP advantage, and an M4 in that situation might be the better gun to have as he sneaks in. Big Box has to check, clears back sights, but when he rocks around, Kenzie hits that headshot as well. That's such a cool round. That is such an incredibly cool round. I, the Nor we drop towards CT spawn, trying to block them off as much as possible. The mid to be split that works off of it. What a great improv situation for Force to deliver. And that's a sick kill. You're right, because the low HP was so low on Shelfie, he had to allow Kenzie to pull those rotators into his crosshair, and that's exactly what happens. Huge clutch on top of it all. Fours tie things up. Ooh, took his time with that shot. Saw two players trying to push in towards lower dark. Now spots one pushing towards top middle. Norway's ready for it, and just deletes Regon. Oh, shot indoors. Nor we tag down 47. Kenzie removed completely. Synopsy's gonna try and double that up. As he swings out, he put Jerry low. Can't get the shot through the box with a USP, but patience pays off. And he'll get a chance to no repeat that. He got shelfy as well. That is a solid hold. Three kills inside of the site. Yeah, but it's not done yet. We're headed out towards long. Uh, does Nori want to challenge? Is he gonna wait for the smokes? I think he's more than happy to just get position at car. Take up some of this space and he can help his teammate cross when he gets here. But Zordi's taking his time. Zordi has waited for the mid pick. I think he was expecting rotations by now. And the problem is he has the bomb. Yeah. If he if it was the other way around, okay, sure, plant for long, I'll watch cross, and then I'll run through long cave, and I've got the post plant, but they can't do that. Yeah. This is interesting. I don't really know why he's not following up at long. I don't think there's any kind of a play to be made where you meet up in middle and go out the double doors, because then you give up all the advantage of the space you've taken. I think Zorti forever is going to have to come to long. Well, he's going to go there now. So he, he knows Long's clear. He's cleared Catwalk, so he might run this. The problem is when Flatron never peeks from CT, he's just waiting for information. It's a big so risk. He's still closer than they think, and he's going to... Oh, I thought he was going to peek that. It's a big risk that Norby's leaving this with, with no intel. Going to put out a smoke now. Op is peeking very, very deep. There's the smoke to allow the cross, although Zorti was already basically across to begin with. Ooh, tight plant. Bomb has been planted. On Flatru. They can use it to cross back if they're bold. That deep smoke is going to be a problem if it doesn't dissipate. So they're inside of it. He fired. He had two targets to hit. Wider angles and better opportunity as he pops up to find one flat through. And now we know Sonari's there as well. He goes for the peak. He didn't need to at that point. Bombs planted, but he wanted to keep the aggression going. I think he stepped up on the taller box. I think he had the exact aim. I think he just he just stepped forward onto the taller box and it threw off his crosshair just entirely. But what a cool round. What a great attempt. Unfortunately, the clutch falls short. And thank God for Bad News Eagles that they managed one round to stop the Seven round streak from fours. What a comeback. We're going to halftime. We'll return with the second half. favoring Gamer Legion, but I think Bait once again will be the happier of the two teams to get six on T side. They're still in this series and they're battling hard. We'll see if they can take us to a third after a very quick break. on that AK, they get it into a post plant, it starts being winnable, but it's how much impact Glowing is able to find. And this is starting to be manageable now for one win. 13-2 at the half, and now five in a row. It reminds me of what we saw against Cloud9 on Vertigo, which was their map pick in the, in the series yesterday, wasn't it? That's true, that's true. On the CT side as well, that comeback of memory circle mm, correctly, so. That's right. It did end with Cloud9 getting the victory on that map, though, as they got themselves together towards the tail end of the map up. Will Fnatic do something similar? Travis almost extended upon by Roy. I think they saw the gun barrel. 
Going for wall bang for Molotov just to try and send him out or just drive him forward into the double spray. Two down. Oh, Crimson is going to be a catch off glowing though. Finds that one response in from mid. Try and draw more attention towards mid and the A site now. Trying for those wall bangs in over towards the elbow position and knowing that it's, he might have escaped there on Crims. Does opt to fall back away from position. And again, generally pretty passive here from Fnatic. And it's starting to get quite proactive for one win, searching for information, getting aggressive, trying to catch Fnatic off guard. You've even got Deco holding super aggro right here at ramp. Nico is hoping for a full overextension. It comes through, and that's the response Fnatic were looking for. A lot of damage done to the T side on that exchange, though. Nico does have a 3 HP. One win. Waiting for more. Fnatic are the ones who have to make the move here. Yeah, time is dwindling down. And now for one win, they start thinking to themselves, where is the end result? You can see Travis deep on B, waiting for that wrap to come through from Candles. It is going to end up being the play towards B. Road to Rio. Not a lot left in the road now. Just maybe a flight ticket, but which way is it going? To Brazil or home? That's what we're about to find out in this match right now with Bad News Eagles versus Forza. 8-7 at half. It was a 7-0 start for B&E. They only win the half by one. Yeah, I think it's actually massively important. They're able to get that, that eighth round on the board. It was the final round of the first half. I think that's huge to just kind of break up some of the momentum and give yourselves a little bit of life going into that break. Otherwise, it's going to be a very quiet break. At least you got something positive to talk about right at the end of the half. Pistol round. A lot of players are bad news eagles in bad news eagles in the upper dark tunnel. Or we shall be crossfire set. He's oh gonna be checked. Pre-fire, I might as I guess pistol round, you might as well run and gun it and see if anyone's there because that off angle has become more popular, but he's still making it work and it's a complete slaughter. Not even a single kill for bad news eagles. That that round could have turned that could have round could have been completely different. That is a hard clear of the corner, pre-firing as well. The fact that it doesn't go his way has got to be so frustrating. But if he gets this kill, I mean bad news eagles is streaming out into the bomb site. That kill buys the time for the counter flash to come in, buys time for Jerry to get involved in the action. And you're exactly right. A slaughter is the perfect way to describe it. All tied up at eight. On inside of the doorway, Synopsy's already out forward of it. Kenzie's gonna spot that, but is ready and waiting and fires the shot to win out the round. Shelfe trying. Not successful, only for one, I should say. I was going to say not successful to follow it up, but his teammates will. One kill so far in the half now for b as they knock Jerry out of that one, but it's 9 to 8 Fours take the lead. Yeah, they do. One round lead. But here come the AK-47s from Bad News Eagles. This has been a pretty brawly dust, too, as well. We just had a crazy one between the French teams previously that went into overtime to decide that series between uh, Heat and Falcons. That was a very grimy, brawly game as well. This one, too, just back and forth. Well, not back and forth in the traditional sense. But heavy action in terms of the rounds themselves. A lot of battles. It's not slow pace. It's explosive. Ooh, baby. And Jerry's going to find the first kill. Jerry inside of the pit was spotted, but knows that Sonari is likewise behind the dumpster. Threw an aid, softened him up. Still couldn't find the kill. AK's going to win that battle. And that might be Sonari's cue to exit. Oh, but he can't. He's caught. Caught inside the smoke <laughs> shelf. He's caught them on catwalk. But he gets absolutely wrecked by GXX, three on three. And it's Zordi that has to hold from CT. Again, that's a one for one trade. Yeah, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I mean when I say back and forth. It is just all over the map. Everyone challenging. Everyone fighting when they see the opportunity. And it's now, all down to Norway in a 1v2. Yeah, now they can't trade that back because it was isolated. It was so chaotic that Norway was segregated from all of this. And he has to rotate back. Catwalk, not a bad shout on this. Doesn't want to get locked into CT. Got a nade if he can find Juan Flatro, but over towards Long, that's going to be a difficult one to find. Waited to confirm the bomb went down so that there wasn't a lurk still toward middle, and he'll head to Cat now. 
peek first. You're right about the nade. Okay, there's the nade. Right about it, and he knows he's right about the position of it because the peek came through just before, so he puts GXX low, flashing himself out. He's gonna catch out one flat row in the process, and he doubles it up. GXX falls. Fours is gonna find their 10th round on the back of Norway. That's an absolutely massive clutch, huge clutch, and that's a wonderful risk to take. You're kind of swinging with your utility, and it could be a problem. You're hoping to catch someone before it pops, and he does just that. I love it. One kill for each figtail. Can we call them figtails because they're on the front instead of like a pigtail? Okay, figtails. I like it. I think, I mean, in a, there's a world in which Juan Flatro could have played that a little bit differently and just kind of, kind of like, you're in the bomb site, man. You're on your own. I have low HP. I'm not swinging for any fight. I'm playing the bomb. I'm playing the teammate. And maybe if he doesn't get picked off on that cross, things slow down. Maybe he can stop the defuse later on. But that obviously didn't happen. Two round lead for fours. It's a 10 to one run at the moment. Very heavy momentum based game. And at the moment, fours has all of it. That's a spectacular mustache. We've seen a lot of good mustaches uh, these days in Counter-Strike. For whatever that's worth. Yeah, I think it's it's coming back into fashion, you know? Mustache? Yeah. You can't do it, okay? No, I can't. I look like Mario. You look like an egg. That too. That was I literally did. what you did in Sao Paulo when you yeah, stayed yeah. for November. And I, the first thing I said was like, I'll never like forget. I'll never forget Henry laughing at me and telling me I look like the uh, bald Mario. <laughs> at breakfast. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that was nice of him. <laughs> this is nice of Norway again. Inside of tunnels, inside of a gray smoke, and they're going to run straight into the barrel of his gun. Stop cold. GXX picks up an M4. Can't win the fight. 11 to 8. Three round lead now by fours. And they're living the dream. Jerry's got these guys playing super well. Way to be aggressive. Step in front of the utility. Step in front of the flashbangs. And they could never get out of the smoke. They could never even find a clean fight. Up on GXX, AK's surrounding him on the rest of B and E. GXX still holding and waiting. Chalfie up the half wall at mid the ramp, and he's actually going to hold that angle as well. So it's a Bit of a cheeky one. You wouldn't see that while you were walking out suicide, or at least not expect it. Not be preset toward that. GXX slowly heading there. He's watching the tunnels, though, so he has to be careful. He needs to call from Zordi if this happens. When Flatro is going to walk into it, caught him. That's one done, but he needs to be aware of the top of middle. GXX. He didn't know where he went. He let him slide into the tunnels, and that means they've lost him again. Scenario's going to go hunting for it. Because now he's called. I didn't see him through the door. He has to be in there, surely, then. Gun barrel could reveal the M4A1S that sticks out quite far. He's pre-fired it early, but walks around inside of flames. He might be in trouble down there. So now he's got to back up. He can't push forward on that. He's stuck between the fire. And it's a three on three. That was a really odd pre-fire. That was very early, that wasn't was it? So I think he expected early. him to swing maybe. So if yeah, he fires, he's expecting him to swing past it. So he'll swing into it, but that's not usually what we'd see. Yeah, it wasn't the cleanest clear of the angle, especially when you see the barrel and you know what, what you're looking at. A lot of utility for an execute here for BNE. They are going up against two players. No counter nades for the defense at this A bomb site, but there's three smokes, a Molotov, two flashbangs for the attack to work with. The problem they have is there's not a whole lot of time. Oh, if he had a shot into that with the pre-fire that Oppers often do in that situation, he might have found two. They were lining oh it up Lord. instead. It's two the other way, and it's for Scenari who walks in. And the site is open. It's all on Norway again. An awkward pre-fire in lower dark, but those shots are absolutely spectacular to get. And that's the power of those smokes along that railing is it creates that little one way when you pop up. You can like crouch beneath it. Nobody knows you're there and boom, before they even can react. Already starting to clear angles to make sure he's not sitting and waiting. 19 and 11, by the way, for Norway. Solid so far, but he's not even going to go for this. I think that, that round two is a product of the lack of counter utility for the two defenders at the A bomb site. If they have any flashbangs, right, they're chucking up into the sky, even an HE grenade behind those smokes just to harass, just to cause some kind of discomfort would have been would have been perfect, but they just had nothing to do to slow it down, nothing to do to make it disjointed.
Round 21 coming up. Four round streak for fours to start the second half. Bad News Eagles get their first on the fifth round of the second half. Spectacular. What a spectacular shot onto Jerry over at Carr. They cut into the lead, it's down to two. Are we thought about putting out an early incendiary in case he saw some people scurrying into the site, but he'll elect to do otherwise. He actually did throw it once he got in, so just a bit deeper. But there is two in the tunnels that will now look to the underpass position instead, try and get a lineup to hold middle and maybe even onto catwalk with a cheeky little boost. I'll walk that boost out so they can see above the double box. Careful, careful, Kenzie. Don't give yourself up too soon. Smoke's gonna go down, buys himself some space behind the door, though predictable position as they spray in, and he'll reposition as a result of that. So two pieces of utility already used, one the preset incendiary over toward B to keep him from rushing. The smoke at long now to hold them off once the contact was made. So it's toward middle that B and E will go instead. Rigon slowly just walks through to clear the first angle. GXX, the deeper they go on this without putting smoke means the more time the smoke will be there when they actually try and split toward B. And it is a split, although it's a 4-1. There is still a lurk in that position. They're looking for a reaction. They're trying to punish something. Now comes the set utility, the permanent utility, and here we go. Are we waiting? Through the core, it's Shelfie, they got the one behind. I thought it was gonna be a lineup for him, it doesn't matter, it's Safe. two kills either way, and you're right. 17 seconds, forget it. Synopsis fires in just to hope to get a kill, but that's it. Yeah, that's the bomb dropped as well outside of mid, so even if they were to come in and get those kills, they would have to actually exit the bomb site to pick up the bomb and then come back into the site for the plant. There's just no time for that. Good hold from fours. A suspicious lack of flashbangs into the bombsite and over the wall as they actually try and enter through those double doors and actually try and challenge into the bombsite itself. All their utility spent in middle. Three round lead we're back into, but another buy coming in for Bad News Eagles. And a timeout as well. Does BNE want to talk things over? Their second timeout of the game so far. So second time out, but we are in the second half. Four rounds from potentially wrapping this up on the fours side. So hasn't been a lot of timeouts, all things considered. If I'm not mistaken, fours used two themselves. Uh, yes. Definitely used two in the first half. Yes. Because they, they called they called one after the yeah the they called one to win. try and stop the, the spree that Bad News Eagles were on and they, they right sorry the one that we were kind of questioning inside. the second one was the one that was in that weird money situation that. Yeah, I was trying to read the, the AWP. Yep, well, here we go. Round 22. A little bit of uh, nades missing on Regan and Juan Flatro. Juan Flatro is 950. He can actually pick him up if he wants it, but playing, I guess, a deeper economy game. Maybe just his role in this strategy is just to run out and challenge, so why even spend the money on the utility? Maybe get activated in middle by a flashbang. True. Flashed, but already between the doors. I'll wait for his time to strike. The rest will go over toward Catwalk. Boost for GXX to see deeper around the corner before they commit to the box. Jerry, good nade, but it's going to go a bit deep. Does do actually quite a bit on the rig on, but that's going to cue them to swing. Shelfie gets the only kill on it, so one flat throw going down. They tried to get out mid, that was when they wanted to do. They, they left him there for that exact position so that when they came up catwalk, he would cut the rotations, but they've actually still gone back to that. So all it really does is weaken their cat. They want to still hold off anything coming out of the B site. 
They're so delayed right now as well. They're so delayed. They're stuck in the corner. Good shot from Kenzie. Zorzi's still here as well, but can't handle the fight. That's Synopsy with one in return. 22 seconds left on the clock. GXX, lovely shot on the AWP that catches Jerry, giving them a better chance still. But Rigon's gone for the drop. He's caught out both. They do finally win out the duels they looked for. And I say drop, excuse me. He was the one that compensated going back to middle, so he lurked through the doors. And they're slow to cover it. Good trade. GXX slides out. Kenzie gone. It's 12 to 10. What a great plan, the double swing. But what a drop down off catwalk for Regon. That's massive. Completely wins the round entirely by that one play and another timeout is called. This time it's from Force. It's their third. So they got to talk about money again. They yeah. got to talk about cash. Sit down with the financial planner and come up with something. Long-term long -term investments. Get those kids to university. Exactly. In this case, get those kids to the Rio Major. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We do have a uh, B and C stream going on underway at the moment as well with plenty of other teams in this two and two battle as well where it's win or go home, it's do or die. It's every game from now on. Yeah, that's a good point. All starting, yeah, starting with these ones, everything tomorrow is you win or you have no chance. And just an update as well, Fnatic actually won their game, so they're qualified, they're in. So Fnatic will be at yet another major, the organization. Lovely, I'm happy about that. I think that lineup is super interesting. I'm glad I'm, we're gonna get to see them kind of play in front of uh, the smaller crowd during the, at least the, the, the challenger stage. Massive game as well for complexity at the Americas Road to Rio with Isaris today, two and two as well in that one. Should be fine. Although that's a little bit of a weird format. The winner of that one gets their third win, but that just means they qualify for an extra bracket to determine the final place in yeah, the challenge it's, it's stage. A, yeah, it's a weird one. It's like you sure. qualify to the next qualifier. Nade does good damage to Rigon. The second one, I don't think we'll catch him. He's backed up down the... Ooh, I am terrible at Nade calls. Yeah, but they've, they've played their trick, right? That's That's the one trick they had. It's like the Battle of the Blackwater, you know? You blew up the ship. Yeah, good you reference. Played your one trick. Wildfire. Now we get to attack. At least in the show, they still held them at bay. And we'll see if Bad News Eagles can make it into this bomb site. Looks like it's going to be no problem. That's back when Game of Thrones was good. Selfie Norway. Night of the Nowhere. Roses has showed up. Look at you. What, did you start watching again or something? I just, no, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I did. Nerd. <laughs> Norway shelf. Uh, that is no rewatch value after how badly that ended. It is tough. But uh, it's so unfortunate. It's, it's so good, be... but it's tough. 12 11. So B and A, big start early, go up 7 0, are now playing the comeback and it finding success in that regard. So I don't know who wants to win this game, really. I can tell you by desire, but not based on action in the server. Yeah, this is a very close affair. I like it a lot. I like that this is a battle. I like that Bad News Eagles have seemingly found a little bit of swagger left. This is now going to be their second in a row, three of the last four. This fours went on quite the run to grab this narrow lead. But this is what the save was for. This round right here. Norway's going to buy an AWP, drop it over to Zordi. He's going to M4 in exchange. Everyone's happy with that one. Shelfie's bought a Zeus. He has an M4 as well. Who doesn't like a good M4? Or an AWP, excuse me. Yeah, there's a double AWP to work with here on the CT side. GXX will have his again. 19 kills for GXX. Shalfi with 15 kills total, picking up the secondary this time. I see why he got the Zeus. Maybe take a shot, fall behind the box, and hope they swing close to you. Either way, Norway's going to have all the attention in this That's round. That's some pretty, like, next-level thought pattern, right? Because you know if it's an AWP and they shoot and you shoot and miss that close, they're just going to run you down, and a pistol's not going to save you in that. Oh, that's not going to save you either. He walked straight into that, had no idea they were already on the stairs. He thought he could catch them going toward B, but B, they will go. Time. And I think you're absolutely right. This is going to go 12-12 because they lost that so quickly. There's no way they're getting back into the site. Very ambitious of Shelfie to try and push up those stairs when that execute is happening before anyone from the defense is mounting any kind of a resistance. Jerry's just going to get away. 
Unfortunately, he's stuck at the A-bomb site. How much does Bad News Eagles want to hunt this? They have, they used, literally, they dumped all their utility into that B-bomb site. They have no flashbangs to activate and get out cave and try and hunt down some of these weapons. So I don't know if they'll want to go for it, but if they can find this other AWP in the hands of Zordi, that's huge. And Kenzie has fallen back to protect Jerry. I'd almost, I'd almost make the argument that Zordi's the more important one to keep alive. I, I would say so given the op situation, but he'll peek just to see if he can get a shot. Tough secondary angle goes for it. Jerry's gonna follow that up, so they will get some guns down right now, but it's a tie game, as we mentioned, and the winds have been coming in quite frequently, so there's still a good amount of cash on the B&E side. I was gonna say, the game's tied, but Bad News Eagles, you'd probably still give them a, almost a, a little bit of like a, just a, a lead. Handicap? No, you'd give them a lead in a way just because they have the stronger economy. For, That's for what I call fours. a handicap. It's tied, but they have the advantage. Well, then you'd give the handicap to fours, wouldn't you? No. No, that, mate. Oh, look, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, screw it all. GXX is gonna challenge and he's gonna go down. Handicap makes something easier. Right? So, like, if, oh, they're throwing the ops away already. Yeah, but you give the handicap to the disadvantaged people. The disadvantaged player. Chat, please help us. We're, I don't know. One we're of us not, is, one of us is a complete idiot. And but... we need you guys to help us. No, we're both, definitely both complete idiots. <laughs> One of us is wrong in this case. That's fair. One of us is an idiot and right. 12 to 12. Five on four. No utility, no nades. I guess the best thing, I mean, on top of the man advantage, the nicest thing that fours have is Jerry in this position. And he's going to hear that utility, and he's going to close them down inside of long. And look at the other side of the map. Look at the mini map. Shalfia, Norway, and yep. Zorti all rotating over and pushing. This is their map now. They own it. What are you going to do about it, Beanie? You better fight hard. Down a man already. Jerry's already behind them. They are looking for it. He'll get one. That's all he's going to get. He runs, runs away, gets through the door. But hang on. If they overcommit to the chase, they'll get him. That's fine. But there's already a flank. Norway. Pistol is able to find that USB from range. And Bomb is down. So has got to go back for it. He's all on his lonesome in a one on three at this point as well. AK to work with. Knows they have to be close still shortly, but where? Where? In the corner. Double peak. Panic. And Shelfie puts Fours back in the lead. What a what a nice round for Fours. Good aggression as well. I mean, the great pick out towards Long, but the courage from Jerry to push up towards middle and give an even better advantage over to Fours. Jason? That's huge. Yes. Chad is correct. We are both handicapped. Well, yeah. There's that. Anyway. One round lead. Ooh, missed shot, missed an opportunity from GXX. I think you might be right on that one. Which one? The the handicap to... Yeah, because if it's tied, yeah, yeah, you give, it, you give yeah. them extra money, yeah. giving them the handicap. That's the way I was looking at it. So, either way, fours up by one at this point. You can take the handicap out of the equation. They both got money, and they're both going to be broken if they're not careful in this round as well. GXX still working his way down toward the doors with Zordi on the other side. Zordi challenging over the Molotov. He might have a chance if he slides out and wants to go for the gap shot. Be a big risk. He doesn't know what's on the other side. All five players for Bad News Eagles in middle. That's a deeper Molotov so they can swing out behind it and he's got the scope so he can see over it. And a counter Molotov to force him back. Another advantage for Force. Yeah, and one flat true going back out toward Connector and therefore joining with his teammates on Catwalks. Already beating them to this, though. He's already rotated back toward the car, so he's going to have a bit of a headshot position here, getting up on top as well. Elevated angle, more of a target to fire at. Okay, deep. Get Synopsy down to 14. Jerry is going to wait with smokes down. He can stay alive without worrying about the flames. Good find. Zordi double scoped in to make sure he hit that one through the wicker box. And it's going to be Jerry that still, ooh, actually quite cleverly gets in behind. Tucks in behind the smoke in the box. He can keep swinging around. Drops down in the elevator. That's just taking ammo and time and energy away from B&E. And finally, Fours will close the rounds. And no clean fights for Bad News Eagles that round on the entrance. That, that's the difference between having those counter nades as well. You can see uh, Zordi with the flashbang out towards long taking a shot chucking another one over the roof taking another shot chucking another flash over the roof and delaying the hit and counteracting the utility so they couldn't use their own nades to actually make progress and then obviously jerry just styles on him a little bit with the jump up behind the smokes third time out used by bad news eagles 
They're down by two. Down by two. This is Forza's map choice. They were slow to get going on it, but now it's been a bit of a back and forth contest. And absolutely the money is become a bit of a factor in this game for B and E as it wasn't two rounds ago. It certainly is now. It definitely is now. And this is this is such a these are the decisions you hate to make if you're a coach, if you're an in-game leader. Having to make a decision to just kind of concede potentially the 15th round to force to say we have to just drop down to pistols because we need to have something we can fight with in the final round. Jerry backing off oh. the lineup. His teammate wants to protect him, but he can't fire through him. They aren't going to get around the corner yet with the pistols. Thankfully, it was pistols as well. If that's an AK that peeks around that corner, I assume he's dead. It's a bold route to run for Kenzie. Jerry's just trying to escape the CT spawn because he knows they can turn the corner any second. And Kenzie's like, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll be the aggressor. I'll, I'll head towards Gar. I'll take the risk and run the, uh, run the, uh, run the gauntlet. Back to the B-bomb, so we go. Nor we not entirely alone. He's got plenty of utility and Zorti's going to have a quick response. Think about B&E for a second as well as they get run into this gauntlet situation at B and get taken down by Norway. Good touchdown by Zorti as he came in through the window, takes out two with an aid. These guys were top eight at the last major. They would have previously qualified automatically on that, but with the RMR systems in place, they're yeah, here the and they've got a fight. And that's, in some ways, that's the beauty of it. I know it seems cruel to them, but the point is, we're getting the people that are hot on the, you know, at the time into the major and therefore making it more competitive in theory. I, I was going to say, it's hard to, it's hard to argue. You'd like to see some kind of gift passed over to, to some of those teams that get to that position. Uh, but I mean, it's hard to argue with how competitive all these teams have been here at the EU version of the, of the, of Road to Rio. This one's uh, pretty huge for me. Uh, Gamer Legion played phase to an overtime loss, but had them against the ropes in the opening map of the Road to Rio for them. They then knocked out G2. At that point, you pretty much have to qualify if you're gonna do that well against top teams. They have, they've just beat Bait, B8, to punch their tickets to Rio. So well done to Gamer Legion. I think they've been pretty impressive this week. Yeah, that's very cool. Good for them. Congratulations. Congratulations to Sceneri to find the opening kill into the pit. And Jerry and Zorti are falling back and look at all the bullets coming through the car. That thing is paper thin. It does not protect anything. And Sorty's gonna go down for sure. I don't even think the smoke would have saved him. More fragile than a Honda Civic. This might be the only saving grace is Shalfi having everyone locked in. There's no retreat for Bad News Eagles. One smoke as well. They're gonna have to dry challenge, I think. Jerry, oh, I just wanted to delay them. He just wanted to protect himself, but he actually essentially gave himself up for nothing. Norway got one shot back, and it's Shalfi, who's not going to be closing out this game in this round. He's going to back away and try and save in a four-on-one. Yeah, he's he's he didn't. Uh, that, that's the strength of that dry challenge as well. Now they're throwing out the smoke and peeking with it, so it's not it's not completely completely out of the blue. But Jerry's turning that corner with the Molotov. You hear that smoke coming in that position. You're like, okay, they're they're setting up the wall of smokes from deep in pit, from deep at long. I've got time to put this Molotov out and delay another five, six seconds, but that wasn't the case. So Forrest has had three chances to close it out. Now we'll only have two more. And the nice thing is with this save from Shelfie, they've got money to buy in these last two rounds. This is not Fours being in a situation where they run out of funds to be able to challenge for the map. They're going to have two really good, clean, strong chances to close this out in regulation. Mm, absolutely they are. But doesn't necessarily mean that they will. We'll see what the plan is of attack for the T's. They've been decent on this T side, considering. Had a defuse that went against them, obviously, in round three of the half, then went on a, of the next five, uh, six rounds, won four of them, and it's it's only been recently, finally, that Ford's been able to adapt back to what they have been doing. And one of those rounds was obviously pistols, where they took the push at yeah. B, they got behind them at middle. That one was just a gamble to take map control, and it worked for fours. Yeah, it did. Let's see if they can channel a little bit more of it. Double op setup. And here we go, round 29. GXS narrowly missing a shot on the cross. Shalfi again in lower dark with the AWP. That's the problem. He missed that shot on the cross. He sat back. He didn't get to see this. 
So Shalfi able to get a good position here, maybe catch them off. He was actually the one that was too aggressive yep. in this position before. Bounced Molotov in from behind. No one's going to see him from top. The Xbox smoke may have saved him on that because I expected that Molotov would actually then come. Okay, there's a second smoke down. That's why. I was going to say that would then mean that they were going to look back toward him. Zordi goes right back out. Shalfi's still there trying to walk away with his AWP. And Zordi's taking the fights. He wants them. He's got two. Zordi's been a beast in this map. Good counter smoke. Perfectly timed. Even plumes before the T side does. Norway stalls them out. Oh, he's still stuck in the corner. They come through, freebie. Now he knows they're backed off. They have to be. Not inside of the corridor with the smoke. That Molotov gone. Luckily, it's flames, and they're quite loud. So he's able to sneak into that corner without being heard. It's Synopsy that's inside middle. Could do some damage on this, but he's going to have to. Five on two. And it might be Fours taking the first map with this flank from Jerry. That's one more gone. And you might as well call this one done, Jason. So four is going to take the lead with their map choice. And took and them a while to get going, but well executed game plan in the end as Norway confirms it. I was going to say the same thing. Remember, this started out zero to seven. They had to mount a huge comeback to get back into this map. So really, really well done in salvaging your own map pick on just two. Map one in the books. It's for fours. We're off to a break. We come back and we're going to continue to see which one of these teams is going to Rio.